Mr. Right. Conradry, I understand that the commission didn't meet today. Um, could you give us a, a rundown of what that's all about? All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, as was indicated to you yesterday, it was the stated intention of the commission to have a meeting today, first of all, with the COVID-19 task force, which task force was invited to survey the facilities and to give effect or to discuss the proposals that the commission has made in relation to new workstations. I believe my one of my fellow commissioners indicated yesterday that, uh, and I did indicate as well, that both sides of the commission looked around and identified several other locations within the facility which we can use to house new workstations. I also said yesterday that it was my firm belief that we should be making these decisions based on public health advice and merely informing the COVID-19 uh, task force. My suspicions and fears have been borne out because we expected to hear or we expected to have that uh, visit from the COVID task force today, following which we would have made decisions, hopefully to be implemented tomorrow in relation to the increase in the uh, number of workstations. As we speak, we are unable to have the presence of that uh, team from the COVID-19 task force because we were told that they were already engaged and as a consequence was unable to uh, meet with us today. Now, my, belief, my, my, my views on this is, is, is well known. We ought not to be fettered by a task force that is comprised persons who are seeking office from this electoral process. And, and it has always been my belief that their presence there could affect objective consideration by that task force of our issues. So we are delayed. And the delay in the COVID-19 task force meeting with us has led to several other delays. As a consequence of not being able to meet and discuss with the COVID-19 task force, there were no new issues to be raised and deliberated upon by the commission. So as a consequence, the commission did not meet. And it was our stated intention as well, after the meeting of the commission, we would have met with a delegation from the People's Progressive Party to discuss some of the issues that they have raised and requested a meeting to discuss. And thereafter, to meet and discuss with the uh, coalition, uh, APNU plus AFC, to meet and discuss some of the issues that they have raised. So all of those consequential meetings were not, uh, were not possible as a consequence of the first meeting not going on. And this is part of a worrying trend. You have seen one newspaper, the state newspaper, already complaining about the number of persons who are housed in this facility. It is my respectful view that that view or that, that, that narrative is being telegraphed from the outset to perhaps predetermine the response of the National COVID-19 Task Force to our request, which makes me even more convinced that we should not be seeking their permission, but in fact making informed decisions and communicating that to them. In addition to that, and this also touches and concerns the COVID-19 Task Force, we are still to hear at the commission level about a response 
to a request that we facilitated to that said task force in relation to the return of the Carter Center Electoral Observer Mission. The, we've seen in the press, and in fact, one of the uh, one of the reasons advanced for the absence of the COVID-19 team today is because they were dealing with some flight to the airport. Now, that only lends support to the thought that some categories of persons are being in, allowed into the country, and it begs the question as to why there is this continued prohibition or uh, avoidance of the grant of permission to the Carter Center team, who have stated and restated their willingness and, the, and availability to join us and to continue the scrutiny that they have started in these elections even prior to the March 2nd elections and in continuance of the observation and scrutiny that they have lent to our electoral process for over 30 years. So that is suspicious. That is suspicious if you ask me. Uh, finally, finally, in relation to this narrative, this new narrative, which is a funny word these days, this, uh, I must remind that the commission unanimously, the commissioners of the Ghana Elections Commission, commission unanimously agreed and supported the idea of the expansion in the number of polling of, of counting stations in this process. So for that to be fettered by for that to be fettered by a government controlled agency is unfortunate. Insofar as it relates to the process today, I'm happy to report that we are making slow progress, slow but steady progress. Uh, I believe as, as I was leaving the facility a moment ago, there were at least 31 completed boxes, and that does not include the 10 stations that have a box in them already, so it's at least at 41, and we're just around 4 o'clock. We still have some issues in relation to the... Uh, objections that are being raised and, and, and how those are being treated with and the ridiculousness of some of them, etc. We're still grappling with issues in relation to the release of boxes, even though I thought we made a decision on this. We're still grappling in relation to issues of release of boxes from the containers in the evening uh, because, in my opinion, and I believe in the opinion of my colleagues as well, unanimously, we are to make optimal use of every hour in the day. Uh, the more we do that, the more effective our process will be, and the more, uh, the more likely we are to conclude this, this, this operation in a duration that is favorable to our concerns. Uh, it's three questions you asked me there, Nazim. I have to try to remember all of them. The first one, uh, in relation so to the two parties, the two they, parties are they, they are, they are. In fact, uh, unfortunately, you, you can't see the full expression on my face when you ask that. But when you look at the issues that are raised, and, and we have taken a position at the commission, we're not entertaining a meeting just for the sake of a meeting. We're asking the, whoever is requesting the meeting to state what the, what the issues are. And when you look at the issues that are raised by both of the major parties, for the more, for, for the greater part, they coincide. 
But I'm happy to report that a lot of those issues that they have raised either have been or are actively being addressed by the commission. And when you look at them, and, and the same happened with the new party meeting that was held on Monday. From By the time their request is received to the time that the meeting is actually held, it's a dynamic process. We're meeting every day. We're, re we're trying as far as possible to resolve those issues. So, yes, the uh, issues coincide in, in for the greater part. And further, yes, we have... Uh, we have resolved most if after all of those issues and the unresolved ones are engaging our attention. To move on to your second question, I'm not privy to the, uh, either the allegation or the specifics made by the, uh, of, the of the claim made by the opposition leader. I can endeavor to take a look at them. I'm engaging with you almost every day. Well, it has not brought, been brought to my um, to the attention of the commission, and I do not know the specific facts uh, to which the on which the leader of the opposition relies in coming to that uh, conclusion. But like I said, I engage with you almost every day. I have no difficulties in scrutinizing his statement and perhaps commenting on it at some time later. Your knowledge, are there any avenues available right now for any commissioner to meddle in? You see, the ambit of elections and the likelihood of fraud is a very wide one. And like uh, with us, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but the the reality is, uh, without specifics, I would prefer I would prefer not to comment on it. But like I said, I will endeavor with the uh, totality or majority of information in my hands. Uh, to to do that, uh, make an informed comment to you. I can't do it. I can't do it in the absence of that. Based on the comments you made in relation to the task force visit, are you saying you foresee they will not approve the additional compensation? I I, I didn't say that, but um, they say future events cast their shadow, and I've seen the utterances that are carried in the. Uh, in one section of the media. I have seen the narrative put out there by certain persons connected to the process, but I have every hope. This, I keep saying this every single day. COVID is important, and um, I'm tempted to say that, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that elections are more important, but this is equally important, and some due regard should be given to it, because a resolution of this can certainly aid the resolution of the other issues in relation to COVID. So the short answer is, my hope is and expectation is that the, uh, that the COVID-19 task force will treat with our uh, request in as timely, efficient, an objective manner as the exigencies of the request requires. Do you would agree that uh, Deacon did not follow all the measures uh, recommended? There's still tentage, for instance, um, in, in the compound and in the building that is being used. Well, the, there was no specific, and I keep hearing this thing, I keep hearing this assertion that there was a prohibition on tentage. Uh, I don't recall, I have read a report from the public health officials that uh, conducted the visit with us. And my recollection, and I'll certainly consult with it afterwards, after this interview, I, I don't recall reading a prohibition in that advice on tentage. So to say that we have flouted the, we have flouted the requirements of the public health um, advice, I will disagree. In fact, every single day, every single day, I see additional measures being put in place 
By day two, I saw new wash stations being employed. As you walk around the building, there are more sanitizing stations than you can count and all of those things. Uh, there's actually a, a sanitization team. The frequency with which they... And that, that team is a large team that is on site all the time. The frequency with which the stations are being sanitized uh, is commendable. So, if anything, I believe that GCOM has exceeded the requirements as suggested by the, by the public health team rather than, uh, rather than flouted them. Thank you very much.